All right, guys, here at Rack Ops Tactical, we are, yes, we are doing a painting your rifle video. So right here, I've got my Savage uh, Model 10. It's chambered in 308, and I am in between uh, scopes on it right now. So I figured that would be the perfect time to uh, get it painted up and ready for its uh, new scope. So first thing I did is uh, a couple of months ago, I actually did some experimenting. So <clears throat> I don't know if you can see this, but this is just a, an airsoft rifle. And uh, what I did is I um, painted it up several times to kind of experiment, to try to see, you know, what style I might like and uh, how it would come out. Um, so that's what I recommend if you... Um, if you're a little apprehensive um, about painting your rifle, go ahead and um, get a, a little cheap BB gun or uh, airsoft uh, rifle or something and paint that up just to get the practice and the experience. Um, right now is not the best time of year for me to be doing it. It's actually snow outside, you'll see in a bit. Um, but I'm gonna paint it outside and then bring it in so it can dry um, in the warmer uh, temperatures. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using the Rust-Oleum Camouflage Series. Uh, you can get these at Walmart or online or anywhere. Um, I'm going to primarily be using two colors, uh, deep forest green and earth brown. Uh, I'm in a wooded area, so that's really my uh, surroundings. So you want to kind of match it up with what you're going to do. I don't have any tan at all in my area, so all the FDE stuff doesn't really do anything for me. <clears throat> but the, uh, the deep greens, the browns, uh, and even the light greens, uh, those all have their place. So I'll probably throw in a little bit of the, of the light colored uh, green, but mainly it'll be the <clears throat> dark green and the <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> deep forest uh, earth brown. So the way you get uh, the pattern is you can use uh, this mesh. <clears throat> and this mesh is actually from a laundry bag. So... Uh, for me, I, I just cut up one of my old boot camp uh, laundry bags. Uh, but if you don't have one, you can get them for like two bucks, you know, at a Amazon or at a big box store. So basically what you do is you spray your base color and spray some patterns onto your uh, rifle. And then what you do is you overlay it with the mesh like this and then spray it on. Now, one trick that I did notice after practicing a little bit is that you want this mesh to be as close and as tight to the surface that you're painting on as possible. If your uh, surface, you know, if your uh, pattern is out like this and there's even an eighth of an inch of space in between the uh, mesh and the surface, it will it will vary the texture. So maybe that's what you're looking for, but for if you're looking for a nice clean uh, snake pattern like, with, like you'll get with this, you want this to be as tight as possible. So with that being said, you don't wanna be pressing tight on there when there's a lot of uh, wet paint on here. So you wanna let it dry a little bit before you go and start doing the patterns. Um, you know, there's much more fancy ways of doing this, but uh, to me, uh, a rifle is a, is a tool um, that you use and if you're gonna spray paint some uh, crazy pattern on there uh, with you know the Cerakote or one of those uh, one of the bake on style I mean you're gonna be putting a lot of effort where you could just be putting about you know a half hour's worth of effort into it and getting pretty much the same result now the disadvantage to these is uh, you're they're gonna they're gonna uh, scratch and they're gonna come off a lot easier than all of those other things that I mentioned earlier. Um, now, the converse to that is that if you do go one of the expensive ways and have it professionally done or something like that, and then you do get a scratch in it, uh, you might be that guy crying on the range. Whereas if you do it like this and you get a little scratch on it or something when you're out in the woods or out on the range, uh, don't even worry about it, right? You don't. You probably won't even notice it. So in my opinion, uh, rattle can, rust-oleum, uh, Krylon's the other way to go. Um, I just happen to go this way, not really a huge difference. Um, but you want to make sure your prep work is done correctly. You don't want to have any, any oils 
uh, any oil-based um, anything on there. I, uh, I typically try to stay away from the oil-based lubricants. That's a, a story for another day, uh, but I really don't have anything except for a little bit of grease on the bolt, uh, which will be covered up anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything prepped up, and then I'll show you kind of what it's gonna look like when it's um, just about to be painted, a little bit of painting, and then uh, some drying afterwards. So with that being said, let's take it from here. Okay, so for most of you, this is going to be old hat, but for uh, those of you that's your first time, um, this is for the, like I said, the Savage Model 10. So really, uh, it's really easy to take apart. Um, if you look right here, there's only two screws that hold the stock onto the action and barrel. So one of them is right here. You have to move this out of the way. It's a 532nd Allen, and um, I like to use these T-handle um, wrenches pop that out and then the other one it's kind of funny you got to slide the bolt release back and in order to do that when the trigger is in you have to uh, depress the trigger pull it back and then uh, back out the screw there while you're holding that back but really those two bolts um, this one here and this one here long and a short and and the um, action and the barrel just slide right off and the trigger group so what you're left with is kind of one complete piece right here. So what I've done for the painting is I, I took this um, uh, braided wire that I have, uh, ran it through here. I took the scope rings off so I could get a nice clean uh, paint on the top. I'll do them separately. Um, I haven't taped this off yet. I just wanted to kind of show you guys uh, the takedown that slides right off. Um, and then for the stock i ran a the braided wire through the uh, sling swivel here in the back i did take off the um now, now i'm blanking on the uh piece right here with two um uh, phillips screwdrivers uh phillips screws and that pops right off so really very easy to take down obviously the the bipod and the bolt came out first um but just wanted to show you guys the two um, screws that hold the stock onto the action. And um, so this is uh, one of the reasons I like Savage is right out of the box. It's a free float um, barrel, which um, helps with uh, accuracy because you're not impacting the barrel harmonics um, as you're shooting. Uh, one thing I did want to point out too, uh, when you're going to reassemble or if you're just purchasing and and just bought the rifle off the shelf the first thing you should do is pull the barrel in action off strip all of the packing grease off uh, put whatever your um, oil or lube of choice is on and then put everything back together but the key is the, the main reason you're doing that is to make sure that all the bolts are to torque spec so you can go on the savage website look up the model and find the exact torque spec for your rifle you really want to do this um, you, you never know how it's going to come from the factory and i know you know the the smart asses out there are going to say well you know i'm paying x amount of dollars for this that's their job they should have done that well okay yeah maybe but no one should care more than you about your rifle it takes all of about two minutes and a lot of guys that have trouble uh, sighting in the rifle when they, when they pull it out of the box it's either because the action bolts are loose or the rail uh, bolts are loose. So there's four bolts right here holding the rail onto the action. Those uh, could be loose as well as your scope rings. Um, those are really your, your three key areas, the scope rings, the rail, and then the action bolt. So those all have different torque specs. Um, look them up, use the correct ones and you won't be sorry for for about two to three minutes of work um, it's worth the peace of mind um, fixing that problem the one mistake a lot of people make is they try to pull this bolt off the, all this does is just um, hold this bottom metal piece on um, in the for the trigger guard area it, it does nothing else so if you're going to just take it apart you can leave that bolt in there you don't need to pull that out all right so next up hanging them up and going to town
All right, so one thing I wanted to show you guys uh, before we actually get into it is um, when you have a base color, like for me, um, I, I have more of a um, green and, and dark brown color in my environment. Uh, you want to make sure that as you're going, you, you want to use the base color more. And what I mean by that is you want to have whichever color is the darkest go on first. And the reason is because that darker color is going to overpower the other colors. And again, don't overthink it. So I'm going to uh, show you what I mean. And I found this out by experimenting with uh, the airsoft. So I'm going to do a patch of the darker color. Put that aside. And then I'm going to do a patch of the uh, lighter color and then I'm going to do the uh, the pattern spray over it so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So here's the uh, deep forest screen on this side. So I don't know if that is coming through, but if you start with the green and then you spray the darker on it, then you're going to get more of the dark color overpowering. If you spray the dark colors first and then spray the green over the top of it, then you're going to get uh, a lighter end result. So whichever one you want to have a darker or lighter color, you want to start with that. So if you start with the darker color, spray on the pattern with the lighter color, then that's, uh, you're gonna have a more dominant lighter color. If you start with a lighter color and spray a darker, you're gonna end with a more dominant darker color. So it's up to you what you wanna use. So now it's had uh, time for the base layer to dry a little bit, about a half hour. So we're going to uh, paint some of the green stripes um, at different angles. And then in between each uh, spray, I'm bringing them inside because it's too cold outside and hanging them up on the ceiling. With these handy little Harbor Freight hooks that just kind of clamp in. All right, so we're out here in the shed and I uh, got some of the small pieces while the other bigger ones are drying. So this is what I was talking about here with the um, uh, having the net really tight against the object because um, if not it, it just it doesn't spray right um, you don't get that clean look to it
All right, so what I'm trying to accomplish here, as you can see, I've got about a hand's width um, section of the green versus the brown. So the idea being that um, now we take the green and we cover the brown sections with the net one at a time and, uh, sp and then spray them with the green so that the green goes on to the um, brown. But what we need to do is make sure it's flat and that we don't have any overspray. So I'm just going to kind of protect the sections that I don't want it to be on. Let it dry a little bit, flip it over, do the same thing, and then switch to the other color. got all the uh, brown spots with green now I gotta hit the green spots with the brown so same thing we set up the um, set up the mesh protect the uh, sections we've already painted so they don't get messed up You don't want to put them right exactly where you want them because you don't want to get uh, lines, but you do want them to be there. So and again, nice and tight. You don't need a lot, just a couple of dashes here and there. There we go. That looks good. Next section here, and you want to try to make it like a little tent so it doesn't dab away the paint that you just did. And especially when you're using your dark color like this, the brown, you want to go less is more. the finished product.
Do a little pan here. And zoom out a little bit. I think it came out pretty good. So again, the brief process is start with a base coat. In my, my case, I went with a dark base coat. Then I did uh, about hand breadth, hand breadth stripes of the forest green. Then once that was done, uh, laid over the mesh and then sprayed the opposite color. So if it was a dark area, I sprayed the light color. If it was a light area, sprayed the dark color and uh, made that nice uh, snake pattern with the Rust-Oleum. And then once it was back together, uh, did the torque. So for the um, Accu, the Savage Accu stocks, looking for 40 inch pounds. And you basically start with the, the front one, do it in 10 uh, inch pound increments, 10, 10, 10, 10, until you get up to 40. And there you go. And then once I get the scope in, I'll do that up as well. And that is how you paint a rifle. Thanks for watching.